Greetings, this is Purple Target, and welcome to my tutorial Let's Play KSP series Crash Test Kerbals, Episode 1 TAC Alpha 1, ISP by Stopwatch. Currently using Kerbal Space Program, version 0.19.1. At Crash and Learn, we explore just enough rocket science to be dangerous, and learn how to abuse math instead of the other way around, to get our Kerbonauts out to the depths of space more or less where we want them for fun and profit. Why the A1? No, it has nothing to do with steak sauce. We're not using rockets to grind kerbals into a hamburger, but rather this is going to be a shortish video on something that fairly specific that doesn't really fit into its own place. So I figured on making this a sidebar subject, or an annex if you will, to the rest of the series. For today's objectives we're going to revisit the specific impulse, or ISP, and what it really means in terms of efficiency. As well, in a previous episode, we discussed the formula for finding an overall ISP for when you have several engines with different ISP numbers. So we're going to find out how we can determine this average value experimentally using a stopwatch. And while we're at it, we're going to validate our mixed ISP equation as well. So I'd addressed specific impulse before in episode 1, TAC 3, but I'll put a couple relevant equations up just to refresh our memories. First is the specific impulse is directly related to the exhaust velocity by the constant g naught, which is the standard earth slash Kerbin gravity at sea level. When dealing with ISP and delta V equations, g naught is a universal constant, so don't go trying to adjust for the gravity field of some other planet. It's always 9.81 meters per second squared, because it's a constant. The second equation is our triumvirate of ISP being proportional to the thrust and inversely proportional to the mass flow rate or fuel consumption. So if our thrust is being kept the same, but we double our exhaust velocity, we double the ISP, and that in turn will half our fuel consumption. Okay, enough review. Get it? Got it? Good. Scott Manley did a short video maybe a week or two ago with a good explanation about why ISP is measured in seconds in terms of standardizing a measure so that metric and imperial rocket scientists could still talk to each other. And I'm not going to talk about that because of course he did a fine job as he always does. So all I can do is recommend his video if you want to know about that stuff. This video is about a line I came across on the Wikipedia article about specific impulse. And it said that the ISP in seconds value is somewhat physically meaningful. If an engine's thrust could be adjusted to equal the initial weight of its propellant measured at one standard gravity, then ISP is the duration that that propellant would last. So we have a test rig here, and we have just a single LVT45 hooked up with an ISP of 320, and we've got 10 tons of fuel hooked up, one on top of the tricoupler, and nine in the tanks that are hooked up on the left with the feed line. I also have the engine set to an action group to shut them down, and that'll allow me to set the throttle and fine tune it ahead of the test because fiddling with the throttle during it would skew the results. The tank on the right is an extra that we use to top up our experiment after we fine-tune our throttle for the 98 kilonewtons which we need which is the standard one gravity weight of 10 tons of fuel. I'm using a factor of 10 in this experiment because this particular motor would probably flame out if I tried to use 9.8 kilonewtons and one ton of fuel. And then we can dump that right side tank to make sure that it can't be used in the experiment. So we'll activate the engines and the stopwatch at the same time, and if the Wikipedia article is correct, this 10 tons of fuel should run the LVT-45 at 98 kilonewtons of thrust for 320 seconds, or 5 minutes 20. So while we're waiting, let's check out some voodoo math to find out if it agrees. So we have our M dot mass flow rate equation, and if we set the thrust to be the same number of kilonewtons to agree with g naught in meters per second squared, they cancel each other out. And we're left with 1 over our ISP of 320 tons per second. So the mass flow rate is going to be 1 320th of a ton every second. So we can see that it would take 320 seconds to use up one whole metric ton. Now if we had the thrust set to 98 kilonewtons, then we'd be using 132nd of a ton per second. 
but since we have 10 tons of propellant in this rig, we're right back to 1 320th of our available propellant every second. Yes, sometimes fractions are easier to see than decimal points. Try it out sometime. And the result is pretty much bang on the prediction. 521 versus 520. So far so good for both Wikipedia and the math. Now, for the second test, we have a rig that resembles our booster and main lift combination from the Garnet Mark I launcher in Episode 1 Tac 3, using one LVT-45 and two aerospikes, vice the two and four that we had on the Garnet. Now this time we still need 98 kilonewtons, but that'll be between all three engines. So we can see that we need about 18% throttle, but the throttle settings aren't very readable for this kind of precision. So we want to use the readout of one of the engines, and I like the LVT-45 because the numbers are simple. So we need it set to 35.6 kilonewtons. Now, I can't really get it exact, so we'll get close enough at 36 kilonewtons, and we can expect it to take a slightly shorter time to complete. But hopefully it won't be off by more than a second or two. So the cool thing with this principle is that if you really want to figure out what ISP a mix of engines will have, you can hook them all up on a rig, set your throttle of all your engines to be equal to the weight at 1G of the fuel that you're going to use in the experiment, and use a stopwatch. When the fuel runs dry, there's your ISP. Now keep in mind that this experiment will only really work with engines running off the same fuel. So SRBs and ion engines are out of the mix for this kind of testing. Now we can see here in our calculation of our mixed ISP values, we can still expect an overall ISP of 360, as the engines are in the same ratio as before on the Garnet launcher. It might be a couple seconds shorter because we're burning a little more than we should, but that's just an issue of the throttle settings. Also keep in mind that this is pretty simple to do on the launch pad for atmospheric ISPs. If you want the vacuum numbers, then you need to get creative. Because now you not only need to make a rig, but you have to get all those engines and fuel tanks up into orbit first to start the test. So you can decide what will take more time. Building a rig, designing a lifter, getting it all into space, and then running a test which for any ISP value worth worrying about is at least 5 minutes or you can spend one minute with a calculator and a formula to get the answer straight away. Your choice. I won't judge. Honest. So the result is 557, or 357 seconds, kinda like a magnum. So we're a few seconds short of the calculated amount, but that is explainable given the throttle setting we had to use through the experiment, and ties in with our predictions. We could run it again with a throttle just under the required amount, and our results would be just above the actual ISP. But I'll leave that for you to try if you like. In the meantime, we're going to move on to this other rig, this time with two LVN engines instead, and one aerospike. And we need to set the throttle for this one to 33.2%, equating to 58.1 kilonewtons on the aerospike, and we'll just be under that at 57.7 kilonewtons. And then we can start the test. Now the purpose of this experiment is to validate our ISP averaging formula in contrast to the thrust averaging formula that is sometimes bandied about on the forms. In the second test, the two equations had answers that were so close together that it'd be hard to say definitively which equation was closest based on a couple second error that we could expect in the experiment. 
So here is our mixed ISP value calculated by our formula at 303 seconds. Because we're running a little cooler this time, we are expecting to get slightly above that in our results, and that would be consistent with the hotter burns shorter time of the previous test. And if we plug all the same numbers for the engines into the thrust weighted averaging ISP formula, then we could expect a time of just over 324 seconds. That gives us a significant 20 second gap to work with. And survey says bang on 305 just over 303 seconds and way under the 324 second value. This should be enough to finally put away the thrust weighted averaging formula so after this, if you see anyone suggesting the red formula to people, point them to this video and give them the right equation to use, lest they suffer the tears and heartache of miscalculating their ISP and end up with less fuel efficiency and thus less delta V than they needed for that critical interplanetary capture burn. So that's enough about ISP. You should be pretty conversant in specific impulse by now, so go out and put it to good use like not stranding Jeb with half a tank of gas less than he needs. This has been Purple Target at Crash and Learn. Peace out. Mark! Ah, I said Mark! That means engine 2. Mark! Lift off. Response, main 12 and 2. Main 12 and 2 still on the launch pad. Go back down and get him. Uh oh. I think you missed. Oops. I don't think they'll stick like that. Thank you, Kerman Obvious. That's okay, grab the deck tape and buffer. More strap to the launch pad. Quickly, before flight notices. Really, guys? I'm right here.